Hey everyone, Upkex here and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. In today's video we are busting out a new Barak and we're going to try him out with the spell armor rework that he has been given in the current patch. Uh, before you start, as you can see, we do have mirrored team set up here. If you ever wanted to see a Malfurion, Abathur, Zildjian, Artanis mirror match, you get to see it in this particular game. The one difference is between the two teams is the fact that the enemy team has an Azebo and our team has me on a new Barak. Hooray! Uh, <laughs> so, uh, by the way, I'm also doing this as a post-game commentary. I did do the first, like, 10 minutes of this as a live commentary, but it's just, unfortunately, um, with the, I'm just sick at the moment. It's just, like, a, a really bad cold, and it is getting better. But I'm just exhausted all the time, and, yeah, just the, po the live commentary is just crap. I just didn't have the energy for it. So we're going to do a post-game commentary, and hopefully we can balance out the lack of ability to be super entertaining and play the game at the same time with being a bit insightful in the post-game commentary. We'll see, we'll see. Um, speaking of insightful, by the way, uh, what has changed with Anubrak? What is this rework all about? Well, one thing to note is that there are a couple of nerfs that come parcel to this rework. He has once again had his max HP and HP regen changed. 10% nerf to his max HP, 10% nerf to his HP regen, which means that Anubarak, in terms of just pure HP numbers alone, is extremely squishy these days. Uh, there's probably a fair few assassins and so on that have, uh, and specialists that have much higher HP than he does, which is kind of unusual and strange for a warrior, but that's the way it is. To make up for this, though, he now has a permanent, always-on, 25 spell armor, which is 25% reduction from spell damage or ability damage. Uh, I think they're they're moving to the phrase spell damage more so these days, seeing as there are a few abilities which actually increase your basic attack damage, uh, and also a few abilities which do max percentage health damage, which doesn't count as a spell damage per se, and isn't blocked by things like spell shield and uh, the spell armor that uh, Anubrak has. One thing you might have noticed as well is in the talent the level one talent selection screen, I was on it very briefly. Uh, we didn't actually take Dampen Magic in this game, but Dampen Magic is, of course, still there. That gives you 50 spell armor now. That's the phrasing they use. So whenever Dampen Magic comes up, just in case you don't know what it is, actually, Dampen Magic, it's probably his best overall level one talent. Uh, every eight seconds, you get 50 spell armor uh, whenever you're hit by an ability, and it lasts for then 1.5 seconds, which is pretty damn powerful. So in total, you will have, with Dampen Magic, 75%, which is the maximum cap uh, spell damage resistance, which is pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. We did just... Uh, that E was just terrible. We just completely screwed that up, by the way. Uh, There's no excuse for that. It was just a mechanical misplay. So, the V, that one was not... Uh, a mistake that was intentionally trying to just burrow in range for a Q uh, or like a better angle on the Q. Now it might have been a bad idea to try that, but still that's what we were going for in the end. It's gonna burrow out of here. Nice heals from the Malfurion. We're being able to be a bit, um, kind of be a, a bit aggressive with our ability usage, usage in this particular game because we do have a Malfurion who can give us mana back, which is pretty useful actually. It's pretty damn useful. Um, the build I'm going for in this game, by the way, it's been very difficult, I have to say, to get uh, an actual good Anubarak game to show you because uh, he, he just doesn't fit in the current meta. I think that's one of the big problems, obviously with the spell damage. And also, I think one of the big things with Anubarak is the beetles that you spawn and their ability to block skill shots means that he's very good against burst mages. So he's very good against things like Li Ming or Jaina or Kael'thas, right? Because, well, number one, with Dampen Magic especially, and even without taking Dampen Magic now, it's just this native spell armor that you have, you take a lot of reduced damage from their abilities. So, it, it does balance out. Now, the thing is, you do need a bit of a healer if you don't take Dampen Magic, because you are vulnerable then to being bursted down with your low HP, even though you're taking reduced damage. But with a healer backing you up, every heal they give you is going to be extra effective against spell damage, so it makes them really good against mages. Very survivable and tanky against them. Additionally, the beetles block skill shots, right? So your beetles will block leaming arcane orbs, sometimes absorb them completely, they'll block magic missiles, they'll block Jaina frost bolts, uh, they'll block Kelta's gravity lapses, all that sort of stuff. You know, Murd and storm bolts, another good example. Uh, beetles can be really good against these sort of high impact um, skill shots that will hit the beetles, basically. Which means, yeah, he's very good against mages. Very, very good, good, good against those particular mages. 
Um, <laughs> interestingly, Nazebo is in this game. I actually heard Nazebo is in the Mage Brawl, which is out at the moment. The poor old Mage Brawl making Anubarak feel bad about all the heroes that aren't in the meta that he would love to be fighting against. Uh, but Nazebo is actually in that, which is hilarious because Nazebo has a level 13 talent. I saw someone made a post about this on Reddit. Superstition, Nazebo's level 13 talent, which makes him take half damage from abilities. <laughs> Whoops! Should probably not put him in the Mage Brawl. That's a bad idea. Um, but Nazebo in this game, we are going to take 25% reduced damage from Nazebo, which is pretty damn nice. Artanis is also pretty damn good. Um, so that reduced damage from Nazebo is going to be pretty good. Obviously, we don't have to worry about bursting him down. And you never know, though. Our beetles might absorb some spider hits or something like that. You never know. That could work pretty well. Um, unfortunately, like I said, the, the meta is not particularly good for Nubarak right now. We're, we're very much in a bloodlust meta, we're very much in a basic attack meta, and that is Anubarak's big weakness, is heroes with basic attack damage. <laughs> heroes with high basic attack damage, which is very single target focused, he's got no defenses against it, and they can burn through his small health pool very, very quickly. So, hero like Raynor is a classic example of someone who's good against Anubarak, uh, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, which has made it very difficult to test out this rework, Zul'jin is also very good against Nubarak, right? These high ability uh, basic attack damage heroes. So it's been difficult to get a game, needless to say. Uh, and then other heroes that are powerful in the meta right now, like Thrall, like Artanis, as we see in this particular game. Um, Rhaegar with Bloodlust. Yeah, Anubarak is pretty weak against them. So it kind of sucks because it means that we're not going to see all that much Anubarak, even given this rework, because he just doesn't fit very well into the way the game is played right now. But when the game does eventually swing back, presumably with balance changes and so on, to a more mage-focused and ability-focused meta, you will likely see Anubarak be very dominant. I think against ability damage, he's going to be incredibly impactful. We've got a big old fight happening here, so let's pay attention to this first. The enemy team, actually not on the bruiser camp, we're actually going to get right in the middle of them. Locust Swarm is pop, which gives you a lot of self-sustain. We're in on top of them, not worried about the damage at all. We even stole that bruiser camp away. And we get three kills for our troubles. This game is going very well for us. Very well for us indeed. Uh, I have to say our Artanis is playing out of his mind in this game. He's playing a really, really good game. Uh, I have to say, you know, I did the Arthas videos. Um, I did a few Arthas games to get you a good Arthas gameplay to show his armor rework. And I did a few Anubarak games to show you the Anubarak rework. Um, and definitely, you could definitely feel the changes in the meta and, and how the meta is performing right now. I felt drastically more effective, drastically more effective on Arthas and more relevant on Arthas than I did on Anubarak over the course of about three games each. Um, yeah, it just, it's, it's pretty rough, honestly, as Anubarak, it's pretty rough right now. So he just doesn't fit in that well. Um, but if you do go up against an enemy team that doesn't have much single target ability damage, uh, uh, sorry, attack damage, and they have a lot of ability damage, you're gonna have a good time. So do watch out for that. Uh, also worth noting that some heroes that you might feel do a lot of attack damage also do ability damage. So watch out for that. Like someone like Vala, right? She does a lot of attack damage, sure, but she also has a large chunk for damage coming from abilities. You know, her Q, her W, everything. It's all very ability damage focused. Uh, her heroics, of course. So you can definitely be pretty aggressive against her. This is a pretty nice situation for us. Beautiful swap by Artanis. Actually destroys the Abathur clone as well. Is everything coming together? The Artanis swap, the roots, the Artanis laser. Very nice. We threw a couple of stuns in on top of that as well to help set it up and to ensure that Zul'jin, uh, the Zul'jins in combo wouldn't get too much damage. Which is pretty nice. Um, as well, as some of you people who are subscribed people who aren't subscribed god dang it you should subscribe i'm normally more energetic than this i swear uh, <laughs> but big team fight happening we're paying attention to this i'll talk about the talents in a second our uh our tannis does go down unfortunately I'm just gonna grab one gem and then run away we don't really want to stay in here obviously we did not have zul Jin with us and uh we did lose that fight it's not the end of the world i want to give the enemy team a bit of a chance so far in this game level 13 to 11 Give them a bit of a comeback. Why the hell not? Just gonna turn in those gems and just try to stall these guys out. We do have enough for a turn in. But I believe Abathur might be holding some of them. I'm gonna get out of there as soon as possible just to lay them. Um, no, Abathur isn't holding too many, actually. It's, uh, both of our teammates are. Zul'jin actually has enough to turn in. But he is currently <laughs> dying, <laughs> unfortunately. 
knock off the enemy team. Actually, that was a four-man knock-up, which is pretty damn good. And just helping Suljin escape Artanis, the enemy Artanis that is trying to snipe Suljin with Suppression Pulse, but didn't quite work out, thankfully, thankfully. Almost swapping them off here, but no luck. Um, but yeah, what I was saying before, we did have a game, I think it was one of our placement games actually, where uh, an enemy in Uberak was running the Beetle build, so I decided to test it out in this particular game. Level 1, we did grab Assault Scarab, which increases the damage of our Beetles by 30%. Level 4, Legion of Beetles, we automatically spawn a Beetle for free every 8 seconds. Uh, you normally spawn them, by the way, whenever you use an ability. At level 7, we picked up Leeching Scarabs, so our Beetles will heal us for 50% of the damage they deal if we are nearby. And then standard heroic at level 10, Locust Swarm gives you a lot of AoE damage and sustain. And then at level 13, we picked up Burning Rage actually in this game. Um, this, I'll talk about why later because there is a kind of a big showdown happening at the moment. Big Swap comes in on the Nazebo. That is very good to see. We pop our heroic immediately and begin focusing him down. You can see those little uh, Locusts popping out and doing damage. They actually pick up that kill, which is very nice indeed. The uh, enemy Suljin does come in and it's being focused down, but our Artanis goes down as well. We're trying to tank up the enemy team as much as we can. Knock up the Artanis as he goes pretty deep. Our, uh, ooh, Tastingo comes out from the enemy Suljin as our Suljin picks off another kill. But our team backs off and a uh, pretty even trade overall, but we do come out slightly the better for it. The enemy Suljin is still a very large threat to me at all times. We do need to be careful of him. He will absolutely tear through us if we're not careful. Zul'jin's just trading, we come in, throw in a Q, and again, we're just sort of zoning him out. We're not actually expecting that to achieve too much. But we are continuing to put pressure in on this keep, which is always good. And then you'll notice, actually, a bit of a tip for Nubarak, in case you guys don't know. That was a good swap from there, Artanis. We knock up the Artanis, but this is going to be a Zed Dul uh, a Z Duljin. A dead Zul'jin, no way around it. He does pop Tastingo. Nice wall, though, from the, uh, the Nazebo. And we're being super sneaky. We noticed they weren't really paying attention, so I just run in and grab the gems and run away. So I thought that was kind of funny when I was playing it. I had a bit of a chuckle to myself. <laughs> I'll take those gems, thank you. Yeah, man. Range of those swaps is crazy. You want X? Um, picked up uh, Blood for Blood at level 16 as well to get a bit more tanky, a bit more survivable, and help burst down the Artanis as well. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, a new Barak build, to be honest. Not a huge fan of it. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, the Beatles just don't seem that good to me, but maybe they are. I personally still feel that you really want to be playing a new Barak against, like I said, a mage team, and then you want to be going with Damp and Magic, Legion of Beatles then for extra Beatles to block skill shots, then probably Chitinous Plating at level 7 into Earth Trocating Spines at level 13. I think that is the best overall build, playing a new Barak in the best overall uh, composition, or against the best overall composition for him. And he can work well in that circumstances. He's also pretty good against a lot of divey melee assassins because he he brings so many stuns just in his base kit, which is pretty good. You see, we're going deep in the enemy team. We've got a lot. As you can see, we're getting quite a chunk of sustain just from our level 16, from our heroic as well, from all that stuff added together. We do eventually get picked off by the uh, uh, Artanis damage, plus uh, Zul'jin kind of chasing us down. But our teammates, they're still alive and they're more than capable of mopping up this fight for us. So we're happy to give up our life in this situation. More than happy to give up our life. But you can see, you've got a lot of sustain, especially in a minion wave. You get even more sustain from Locust Swarm. It's pretty damn good. Um, you can sustain through a lot of health, uh, a lot of damage with that, and the healing with your Blood for Blood as well. But as you saw in that team fight, once heroes like Artanis and Zul'jin, with that high basic attack damage, turn around and focus on you, you do melt regardless. Of course, that meant they weren't attacking our teammates, and we ultimately won that team fight pretty damn well. I'm helping us secure a lead in this game. We're also approaching uh, enough gems for another turn in, which is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> looks like Avatar went for... <laughs> he went for Mule. <laughs> He's been trying to keep his walls alive, and the gate eventually did die. Oh well. well. We'll probably survive. Just barely, just about. <laughs> Uh, and we are returning here, uh, approaching level 20 as well. I think in this game I do grab Hardened Shield at level 20, which is fairly standard, I feel like, on an Uberak. Uh, though actually, now I think about it, it's actually not as good as it used to be. Gives you 75 armor, but obviously 25 of that armor is overkill now with the spell armor, so it's not as good, actually. Interesting. I feel like 
I feel like they need to rework some of these talents. I feel like the block on Arthas and with Hardened Shield on Anubarak, you know, sure, if you get affected by vulnerabilities, it does kind of, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter too much that the bonus or the superfluous armor, as it were, still ends up being very effective. But I don't know, I feel like if the enemy team doesn't have any vulnerabilities, then your talents are inherently being ineffective because you're getting too much armor, or getting more armor than you can use. I think they should make hero-specific versions of them, which reduce the overall armor you get, but maybe improves the duration or the cooldown or something like that, or gives some additional effect, just to make those heroes just a little bit more effective. Like, for example, Damp and Magic works really well with Anubarak because, hey, you've got 25 spell armor. That gives you an extra 50, which brings you to the cap of 75. I think that, that makes sense. I, I don't know. That's that's what I think with Hardened Shield, actually. I didn't actually realize it playing the game. I'm only realizing it now. But I think they should rework it to some sort of Anubarak-specific thing to take account for the fact. And they're going to have to do this with other heroes as well. Nice swap um, as they get um, armor reworks. On top of that too. You can see it can be really aggressive here. We're just trying to body block this Malfurion out of his base so that we can kill him, knock him up with the Q and get the kill. Basically we've got nothing to fear. It's only Nazebo and Malfurion. We've got spell armor. We have like two very powerful defensive uh, activatable abilities plus our shield. We could afford to go in that aggressively. There's an Abathur clone as well of Nazebo but again we got the ability damage reduction so we're not scared. I could do a bit of a fun body block to end the game out and yeah skins won! Skins win, eh? Hey, skins get MVP, which is pretty good. Personally, my MVP for that game was Artanis. I thought he played really well. He had a lot of great swaps. Gave him the vote, actually, in the MVP screen. Someone else agreed, too. Maybe himself, hard to say. Uh, but, yeah, I, th I feel like our whole team actually played that pretty damn well. Um, so yeah, my thoughts on the Anubarak rework is that it's honestly kind of hard to judge. You know, it, it's kind of... Hard to judge there. The stats, as you can see, our stats not particularly um, impressive overall. Like they're fine, but they're not amazing. That is the talent build I went for. Again, it's kind of a beetle build. Uh, also, not overly impressed with the beetle build. I, I don't know. It, it seems to do okay in some games, but I don't particularly get it. It just seems a bit underwhelming to me. Uh, Legion of Beetles at level four is, of course, the exception. That's a great talent. Um, but yeah, overall, I feel like we're gonna see a new Barak come into his own once mages come back into the meta a bit more or of course if people pick the mages somewhat against the meta a new brack is always a good choice for example if the enemy team has a Li Ming, a new brack is often a very good choice to counteract her um i do feel like you know dampen magic is still probably your best talent level one overall it's pretty damn solid um and yeah then building you know kindness plating at level seven to get basically more hardened carapaces off which is your w it's your shield so you get that more often, which can really help your, your tankiness quite a lot. And then Urtricating Spines at 13, a bit of damage that will synergize really well with that reduced cooldown your W. Um, all the level six, well, Blood for Blood is a really good level 16 choice and Hardened Shield is good too. But like I said, I would I would like to see that Hardened Shield change to something Anubarak specific that would, I don't know, just, just maybe last a second longer. Or maybe last two seconds longer, but only be a 50 armor shield. I'm not sure exactly what to make of it, but I do feel like... I, I just don't like the design of having that kind of bonus armor not fully synergizing with the, the native spell armor that you have. I know it's a small deal, but that's just something that gets at me personally. Anyway, that is a new Barak. Um, yeah, unfortunately, not a very relevant hero at the moment, but... It is overall a buff, right? The spell armor is really, really good. And bear in mind, you have a lot of continuous sustain from your shields. You have a lot of continuous sustain from your Locust Swarm. And you'll get a lot of continuous sustain as well from your healer. And all of that stuff becomes much more powerful once it's amplified by 25 spell armor, right? It's really, really good. And do bear in mind that most heroes have abilities that do spell damage. Um, a lot of damage in the game is spell damage, so I think it is a buff overall for Anubarak. I just don't think that it's gonna see much light for a while while you still are in the very basic attack, you know, the uh, and Bloodlust focus meta, you know, with Rhaegars, with Artanis, with uh, Zul'jin and Raynor and Tychus and all that sort of stuff. I don't think we're gonna see a ton of Anubarak, to be honest, but there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Hopefully I'll be back to 
kind of fighting form and full energy form again. It's been a bit of a drag the last few days, unfortunately. But we are, uh, yeah, definitely feeling a bit better. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for more Heroes of the Storm stuff. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys all then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.